Hi there, it's Gabrielle, and I will be presenting the concept of an ordered field as it applies to the real number system. What is an ordered field, especially as it applies to the real number system? Well, in order to describe an ordered field, it is necessary to first describe what a field is and what an ordered relation is. A field, as we know, is a set with two binary operations of addition and multiplication. These operations satisfy the following axioms. All of these axioms here can be found in Chapter 1 of our textbook. However, this is only some of them. Before I get to the definition of an ordered field, I will briefly address order relations because what we're going to be looking at here are binary operations. An order relation is a set of ordered elements of a set F that satisfy axioms of order. One of these axioms is the trichotomy law, which is, for any ST that is an element of F, exactly one of the following hold, that S equals T, that S is less than T, or that T is less than S. And the other axiom is the transitive law, which is if S is less than T and T is less than V, then S is less than V. Now that we can see how these inequalities work, we will look at my first proof, which is the following. Let A, B, X, Y be elements of the reals. Suppose that A is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to B, and suppose that A is less than or equal to Y, which is less than or equal to B. Prove that the absolute value of X minus Y is less than or equal to B minus A. With this proof, we can use lemma 2.3.9.4, which allows us to use two inequalities. In the drawing, we see that we have two equalities which are x is less than or equal to b and y is less than or equal to a. If we analyze x minus y, we see that x is less than or equal to b, and as a result, 0 is less than or equal to b minus x, and y is greater than or equal to a, and as a result, 0 is less than or equal to y minus a. And as we can see through algebra, x minus y is less than or equal to b minus a. We can do the same thing for y minus x and find that y minus x is less than or equal to b minus a. Therefore, by lemma 2.3.9.4, it has been proven that the absolute value of x minus y is less than or equal to b minus a. These principles lead to the rest of the axioms for binary operations, which are what you see here. And these axioms that you see in red represent an ordered field. I will go through them really quickly. Trichotomy law, the transitive law, addition law for order, multiplication law for order, and the non-triviality law. I just want to point out something here, that these properties do not characterize real numbers because rational numbers are also an ordered field. So before I move on to talk about the one axiom that distinguishes the reals from all other ordered fields, I want to prove lemma 2.3.9.6, which is the triangle inequality, to show how these ordered relations work. Before I do the proof, I will outline the goal for the proof. The goal to prove it is to show that the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B squared is greater than or equal to the absolute value of A plus B squared. I will use the fact that for all X in the set of real numbers that the square of the absolute value of X equals X squared. It's a postulate we know. For all real numbers a, b, we will look at the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b quantity squared equals the absolute value of a squared plus 2 times the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b plus the absolute value of b squared. If we look at the idea that the absolute value of a is greater than or equal to a, as well as the absolute value of b is greater than or equal to b, and then incorporate our known that the square root of the absolute value of x equals x squared, 
Then we can conclude that this equation is greater than a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Thus, as a result, this equals a plus b squared, which then equals the absolute value of a plus b quantity squared. So it is shown that the absolute value of a plus b squared is less than or equal to a plus the absolute value of b quantity squared. As a result, it is proven that the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. I'm now going to talk about the one axiom that distinguishes the reals from all other ordered fields. In our book, it is axiom 2.2.4, the axiom for the real numbers that states there exists an ordered field that satisfies the least upper bound property. I will explain. In defining the least upper bound, let's address set A. Let's let R be an ordered field. Then A, set A, a subset of the ordered field R. With this in mind, then set A is bounded below if there exists a number, little b, that is an element of the reals, wherein little a is less than little b for all elements, little a, that is an element in set A. In this case, the number b is called the upper bound for A. Likewise, the set A is bounded below if there is a lower bound little c that is an element of R that satisfies the axiom little c is less than or equal to little a for every little a that is an element of A. We can refer to the least upper bound as S equals L-U-B-A, uh, but I prefer to refer to it as S equals S-U-P-A for supremum for the least upper bound. We can define the greatest lower bound for the set A in the same way, and it can be referred to as I equals GLBA or I equals INFA for infimum A. So as you can see, the supremum is greater than or equal to B for all upper bounds of A. Also, the infimum is less than or equal to little c for all lower bounds of A. So now that we have defined the least upper bound and the greatest lower bound, let's do another proof. I want to do a proof with regards to the least upper bound property, as well as one for the greatest lower bound. So, I want to prove that if little x is an element of the reals and is an upper bound for a, and little x is an element of a, then there is a least upper bound for a, which is little x equals least upper bound a. Here we see that a is a non-empty subset in the reals. So, for my proof, let little x, an element in the reals, be another upper bound for a. Because little b is an element of a, then little x is less than or equal to b, where b is an upper bound for a. Thus, x is less than or equal to all the other upper bound for a. Therefore, x equals the least upper bound for a. My second proof here is to show that if little y, an element in the reals, is lower bound of a, then little y is an element of a, and then a has a greatest lower bound, and little y equals the greatest lower bound of a. So for this proof, let little y, an element in the reals, be another lower bound for a. Because little c is an element of a, and then little y is greater than or equal to little c, where little c is a lower bound for a. Thus, little y is greater than or equal to all the other lower bounds for a. Therefore, little y equals the greatest lower bound for a. Thus, proven. We have just seen how a field has ordered relations and how it's bounded. Fields with relations. So, what is an ordered field as it relates to real numbers? It is a field with a relation. And this relation revolves around the least upper bound property, the supremum. So this all may seem interesting and it's all fascinating, but why are we even learning this? Well, because as our author Ethan Block states, virtually all the major theorems in this text concerning such topics as continuous functions, derivatives, integrals, sequences, and series rely upon the least upper bound property. 
Consequentially, this leads up to the concept of completeness. Let's assume that there is an ordered field R, which hold a group of non-empty subsets, one of which is A. So if A has an upper bound, and that upper bound has a least upper bound, a supremum, in R, then that ordered field is complete. This is really important because this property distinguishes the reals from the rationals. And with the ordered field property, it characterizes the reals. Hence, the set of real numbers is the only set which is a completed ordered field.